The Moab Desert is absolutely spectacular. Lots of red rock and beautiful plants and my favorite, the biological soil crusts. Biological soil crusts, or biocrusts as we like to call them, are a community of mosses and lichens and cyanobacteria that live right at the surface of the soil, anywhere that soils can see the sun. I think people are very surprised to realize that the soil is alive. People don't think of deserts as full of living things, but here we actually have these incredible living communities that cover our desert floor in between the plants and hold the soil in place in really important ways. Biocrusts matter for so many reasons in these deserts. They stabilize soils, they add fertility, they interact with plants and wildlife in ways that we're only just starting to realize. They're very important communities in these ecosystems and we want to protect them and sustain them as best we can. Soil crust is this incredible glue that really binds the soil particles in place. And so it can wrap itself around all of the sand and soil grains that we have in the desert. And it really holds this whole ecosystem together and allows it to be this beautiful place that everybody loves to look at. Oh, look at these incredible strands of cyanobacteria and the way they move down into the soil and hold that sand together. That's what we're seeing is the sand stuck onto the cyanobacteria. And that's why they're such important soil stabilizers. It's this exopolysaccharide glue that they leak out of their cells and it stabilizes the soil. That's why they're such good soil stabilizers. So you see how kind of bumpy and lifted the biocrust here is? And so it takes water longer to move downhill and it allows more water to sink into the soil. Rain is everything in the desert. And so whenever it rains here, anything that can take advantage and hold on to that water and increase that moisture in the soil is essential for things to survive in this desert ecosystem. And so biocrusts have this incredible ability to stay dormant when they're dry. And then once they get wet, they actually kind of come back to life and they start photosynthesizing and they start fixing nutrients and, and providing services to the ecosystem. And so um, when it it rains, they're, they actually get bigger and they're able to take that water and hold onto it and increase the soil moisture and keep it in the system so it doesn't just run away and that can potentially provide more moisture to the, to the top few centimeters of the soil and eventually to those plants beneath them. So you, you see how there are all these pinnacles within the biocrest and so actually the different organisms that live with on, on these pinnacles, they arrange themselves on different sides of the pinnacle, depending on the direction of the sun, and they like to align in certain ways, and so you'll get different organisms, different communities on different sides of the biocrest pinnacle. So you see these here. These are all different lichen species that are living, and these darker colored ones, these are actually uh, nitrogen fixers. So these are the ones that are taking nitrogen from the atmosphere and turning it into a form that other organisms and plants can use. So here we have these incredible lichens that are living in the soil and they're living within lots of different lichen species and then amidst mosses. And then all of it is kind of held together through cyanobacteria. So it's pretty cool. And then all of these little hairy guys here, that's all moss. And if you were to put water on that, it would turn green, or when it rains, it gets big and turns green. It's really incredible. And so the biocrests, they're actually, they create these pinnacles, we think because of frost heave. So what's happening is most of what you're looking at, the biomass here is cyanobacteria, and they're kind of creating this web. And as it freezes and thaws in this desert, the freeze-thaw action of everything being held together kind of pushes the soil crust up into these pinnacles.
The desert is very fragile. A lot of the organisms that live here are tough in a lot of ways. They can handle extreme climate, lots of ultraviolet radiation, but they're also really sensitive to other kinds of disturbance. And that's especially true for biological soil crusts. Going off trail causes lots of damages to the biocrust and plants and the wildlife who depend on them. You've seen intact biocrust. You've seen these incredible pinnacles that get formed. And so inside these pinnacles, it's not solid. It's kind of airy and has these big air pockets. And so I like to like tell people it's similar to a meringue. And I use that to illustrate this point that if you step on a meringue and crush it, that's what happens to biocrust. The whole structure gets destroyed and it just breaks apart and it's gonna take a long time for that to reform. There's this great illustration that's been around for a while of this boot coming down and about to crush these super terrified biological soil crusts. And if that boot were to come down and break them apart, their whole bodies are gonna kind of break apart under that compression. It's gonna take a long time for them to regrow. So they're really scared and it's for a good reason. And so when we see this damage in biological soil crust, what that means is the things that the bio crust usually do that we really depend on aren't happening anymore. So that stabilization of soil, we can see lots of dust getting produced in an area that gets disturbed after the bio crusts are harmed. We can see a reduction in the plants and the connection of the bio crusts. We can see lots of feedbacks that occur after that bio crust is destroyed. People come to Moab because it is such a beautiful place, but biocrusts are a part of maintaining that beauty. They're literally the glue that holds the place in place. And so if we don't want dust storms blowing through, if we want those pictures of crystal blue skies and, and the rock looking gorgeous in the sunlight, we need biocrusts to stay where they are. And when you're coming to this place, you may not notice how important it is to stay on the trail, but that's essential because as you start, you know, maybe losing the trail or widening the trail, what you do is you start trampling the areas alongside the trail and you start making these social trails that can really disrupt the ecosystem and really cause a lot of damage. When we see those braided trails all over the bio crust, we've really reduced the stability, not only because the organisms have been crushed in those different trails, but also because we create new places for water to move when it does rain, which means erosion will continue to get rid of those bio crusts that we want to be there even after the trail is made. It's important to stay on the trail so that we're not causing damage that isn't necessary. We want to get out in our Jeeps and on our ATVs and on our mountain bikes and hiking, but if we can stay on the trail and not widen that trail, we can have so much less effect on the ecosystem. So you really want to stay within that trail and be really aware when you're here. Think of, have it in the forefront of your mind that staying on the trail is part of, you know, being a responsible visitor and being somebody who cares about this place. Remember as you move through these special places that you're a part of the solution. If you can stay on the trails, help others stay on the trails, take a minute just to get down and look at these biological soil crusts. There's so much that we all can do to keep this place the way it is. So when you visit Moab, practice those leave no trace principles, practice visit with respect and really engage in being a steward of this place so we can all continue enjoying Moab for years to come.